and welcome to Science with Mrs. Blackburn and welcome to my kitchen. <clears throat> so we are getting closer to my favorite holiday, Thanksgiving. And if you know me, you know that I love to eat, but I also love to cook. And the reason why I think I like to cook is because there's a lot of science involved in cooking, particularly chemistry. And chemistry, as we've been discussing, is just the study of matter. And when you think about it, cooking is just manipulating and working with matter. So the reason I wanted to invite you into my kitchen today is so I can show you a few things that we can do with matter and we're going to cook up something yummy for Thanksgiving. So let's get started. Before we begin, here are some basic things that we need to know about matter. Number one, matter is anything that has a mass and takes up space. So matter can exist in three phases depending on the arrangements of its particles, solid, liquid, or a gas or plasma, but we won't be cooking with that today. Speaking of particles, all matter is made up of tiny particles called atoms. There are 118 different types of atoms that we know of. Atoms can join with other atoms to form molecules. The types of atoms and the arrangement of the atoms in a material give that material its properties or characteristics. This means that all the things that we love about our food, the flavor, the texture, the smell, are all caused by the organization of the particles in that specific food. Furthermore, everything you see around you has its unique characteristics and properties because of what atoms make it up and how those atoms are arranged. Pretty cool, huh? Now, Atoms have their own structure, and only certain atoms can join with others, but we'll save that conversation for another time. So, we can't see particles like atoms or molecules, but when enough of them are grouped together, we are able to see the materials they make up. And we categorize these materials based on the arrangement of the atoms. So, here's an example of something that you can find in just about any kitchen, some aluminum foil. The cool thing about this material is that it is made up of all the same kind of atoms, aluminum atoms. We call material like this elements. So you can think of an element as the most pure type of material you can find. They are so pure that we even name the individual atoms that make them up after the elements. Other examples of elements are materials like gold, oxygen, carbon, neon, and mercury. The interesting thing about these materials is that they can't be broken down or simplified any further. That's because no matter where you look in that material, you'll find the same kind of atom. Here is another material you'll find in almost every kitchen. And if you're like me, you'll love the taste of it. Salt. When it comes to how matter is organized, salt is slightly more complicated than something like aluminum foil. This is because it is made of more than one type of atom. Salt's chemical name, and yes, every material has a chemical name, is sodium chloride. It has this name because it's made of two different types of atoms. You guessed it, sodium and chlorine. Now here's a little disclaimer here. There are very specific rules for how compounds are named that tell chemists important information about them. That is why sodium and chlorine make sodium chloride. The "-ide part is important, and you'll learn all about this in high school chemistry. Now when you look at salt, it looks very pure to us, even though it's made of two different elements. Again, two different types of atoms. But here's the thing, it looks so pure because the sodium atoms and the chlorine atoms have chemically combined. This means that they have bonded together. Compounds are materials that form when two or more different types of elements chemically combine. So salt, or if you want to be fancy, sodium chloride, is a compound. Other compounds include carbon dioxide, baking soda, and water, and my favorite kitchen compound of all, sugar. By the way, if you really want to freak your family out during Thanksgiving, at the dinner table, ask them oh so politely to pass the sodium chloride and watch their faces. Here's the thing. It's somewhat rare to find plain, pure substances like elements and compounds just lying around, especially in your kitchen. That's because most matter that we see and interact with on a daily basis are mixtures. They are made of different types of compounds and elements that haven't chemically combined, but they're just kind of hanging out together in the same place. We say that they are physically combined. 
and one of the most important parts of cooking is actually about mastering mixtures. So, to learn more about mixtures, let's get cooking and head back into the kitchen. So today I have the perfect Thanksgiving recipe that is going to teach us about mixtures because we have to make two different types of mixtures to make this recipe. This is a cranberry sauce recipe that you can eat by itself or it goes really, really good with some turkey. So let's go ahead and get started with our ingredients. So the ingredient list for this recipe is really, really simple. All you'll need is six ounces of cherry jello. They come in the little three ounce boxes, so you'll need two of those. You'll need 14 ounces of whole berry cranberry sauce. That's gonna be important for our mixture. A can of crushed pineapple. We have a 20 ounce can and we'll use almost all of it. And then you'll need some pecan pieces, about a half a cup full of that. I already bought the pre-crushed pecans, but if you wanna crush them on your own, you can do that. So really simple four ingredient recipe. So the first steps you're gonna take in this recipe is you're going to take your can of crushed pineapple and you're going to open it and drain most of the liquid out. Now you wanna leave a little bit of that liquid in there because it'll make it taste really good. But I've drained most of it out. You're going to measure out a half cup of pecans, okay? And you're going to empty your cranberry sauce into another bowl. And I love how that cranberry sauce just retains the shape of the can. I think that's really funny. So what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna mix all three of these things together in a bowl, okay? So let's go ahead and start with our cranberry sauce. Beautiful, right? And then we're going to add our pecans and then add our pineapple. So I'm just gonna give these a really nice mix all together. So as I mix all of these ingredients together, I'm making what is known as a heterogeneous mixture. Because as you can see, if I take just a little spoonful here, you can still see some of the cranberries, you can still see some of the pineapple, and you can still see some of the pecans in there. And I'll get a little close up of this. It looks kind of gross right now, but I promise it's gonna be really yummy here in a minute, okay? And you can still see all of the different ingredients in there. It's not thoroughly mixed. Now, I have mixed it all together, but I haven't put it in a blender or anything, have I? So, this is a heterogeneous mixture. Now, the word hetero means different, okay? So, we can still see all of the different parts of this mixture. Now, you're going to take this mixture you just made and sit it to the side. And remember, this is a heterogeneous mixture. So, let's go ahead and do the next type of mixture that is going to go into this recipe. So, moving on to our second type of mixture that we're going to make for this recipe. We still have our jello over here and I've emptied it into a little bowl. And then I've put two cups of water to boil on my stove. And so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off and now that it, it has been boiling, I'm gonna remove it from the burner carefully. And if you decide to make this as I make it, make sure you have a parent helping you with this part. So I'm going to empty my jello powder. And, and before I do that, I want you to notice. So here is the first part of this mixture the jello powder and the second part is going to be the water here so when i add these together and i mix them you're going to see something way different from what we saw with the heterogeneous mixture notice that when i put the jello powder in there and i mix it together what happens to that jello powder it's going to dissolve in there okay and it's going to dissolve and now that i look at it once i mix this together really nice you're not going to be able to tell where the jello ends and the water begins, are you? The jello powder dis dissolved in the water. So what's happening here is we have what is called a homogeneous mixture. Home meaning the same. It's going to look the same. Now what has happened is all the little particles of the jello powder have spread out into the water. That's what dissolving is. It's when all the particles spread way out. And so now it looks like this is just one thing when really this is still just a mixture. This is water and jello powder. It's just all of the particles of the water and the particles of the jello 
powder are all interspersed very evenly. It's an evenly mixed mixture, okay? So let's kind of compare these two mixtures. I still have my ball over here. This is my homogeneous mixture of jello and water. And this is my heterogeneous mixture of fruit and nuts, okay? In my heterogeneous mixture, I can still see all the different ingredients here, okay? I've mixed them, but they're not evenly mixed. I would have to put them in a blender to really evenly mix them. Over here, though, my water and jello have been totally evenly mixed. We had dissolving happening. Now, there are actually two parts of a homogeneous mixture, okay? A homogeneous mixture is also called a solution. And you've probably heard that word before. A solution is just a mixture that is made by dissolving. So we have a jello solution over here, also known as a homogeneous mixture. And every homogeneous mixture has two parts. It's going to have the solute and the um, solvent. Okay, the solute is going to be the thing that gets dissolved, in this case, the jello powder. And the solvent is going to be what does the dissolving. In this case, it's going to be the water. And little hint, most of the time it is water. Your solvent will be water. So what we're going to do next is we are going to take our two mixtures and put them together for our recipe. So let's go ahead and do that. So you're going to very carefully and remember, this is very, very hot. So I'm going to be very careful as I do that. You're going to pour your jello mixture into your fruit and nut mixture. And it's going to be very thin. And you've got to make sure that you scrape up all the different parts here into your bowl. And make sure you get all that jello in here. And guess what kind of mixture we made again? We still have what? a heterogeneous mixture because those fruits and the nuts and everything didn't go anywhere okay so that's going to be our cranberry sauce and what we're going to do now is we're going to carefully pour this into something that we can put in the fridge so I have very carefully poured my mixture into a nice little bowl and I'm going to cover it and then I'm going to put this in the fridge for a few hours to set and it's going to cool and chill and that jello is going to firm up and this is going to make a nice uh, cranberry sauce that I can serve with turkey or sometimes it's nice to just eat by itself. It's really sweet and yummy, almost like a dessert. Three hours later. So now our cranberry sauce is done and I'm going to take a quick taste and see how it turned out. So here we go. Mm. I really love this because like I said before, I can just eat it by itself. It's really fruity, really yummy, like a dessert or if you like things like that with your turkey or dressing. All of that food you can eat it alongside with that so it's really yummy and it's a big hit and super easy to make as you saw so this is really awesome you ought to try it sometime just giving you all a little look at my helper in the kitchen he's always hanging around under my feet to look for scraps so he's my sous chef say hello wicket Thank you so much for joining me in my kitchen today to learn a little bit about chemistry and to cook some of my famous cranberry sauce for Thanksgiving. If you want to try to make this at home with some help, of course, um, I'm going to include a link to the recipe down in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope you have a happy Thanksgiving and a wonderful day.